Well, greetings all on this glorious Thursday, snowy Thursday morning here as we gather for the Thursday edition of Brian's Bible Break and as we continue on our journey through 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, Paul's discussion on the significance and truth of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so this morning we're reading from verses 32 through, through to 34 and reading from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us for the blessing that it is. And Lord, we pray that you will guide us as we come into your presence, as we rest in you, and as we meditate on your word, that you would lead us into a deeper understanding of your will for us, the truth of your scripture, and for our, as we deepen our relationship with you. And so, Lord, we thank you. And we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. So, a reading from 1 Corinthians 15. And what value was there in fighting wild beasts, those people of Ephesus, if there will be no resurrection from the dead? And if there is no resurrection, let's feast and drink, for tomorrow we die. Don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. Think carefully about what is right. And stop sinning, for to, for to your shame I say that some of you don't know God at all. These are pretty strong words from the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. And he is acknowledging uh, their sinful behavior, their uh, wayward ways as they have turned from the gospel of Jesus Christ and followed uh, fall, the false teachings of the Judaizers and other false uh, doctrines that have been uh, laid out. And he, he's continuing this message to the church in Corinth and to us today, that there is only one truth, only one way that leads to life and leads to eternal life, everlasting life, and that is Jesus Christ. And all other ways, all other practices are foolishness. And so he says, and what value was there in fighting wild beasts, those people of Ephesus, if there will be no resurrection from the dead? I don't know about you, but I don't I wouldn't want to be thought of as a wild beast, the church of, of Jesus Christ being considered wild beasts. And yet, ironically, today, we hear that similar uh, tone being spoken against Christians, against the church, that we are haters. We are uh, propagators of hate and there is no truth in us. That we don't love our neighbors as ourselves, we hate our neighbors. And so we hear those things, but in fact, that is not the truth at all. In fact, when we are in Christ, his love radiates from us. And his love is truth. And so Paul says, what's the point in fighting if there is no resurrection? What's the point in standing firm in the truth of the gospel if there's no resurrection? What's the point of standing up for the truth and, and sticking our necks out for the truth if there is no resurrection? What's the point in taking a stand for anything? If there is nothing beyond this life that we are living here, if there is no resurrection from the dead. 
And he says, if there is no resurrection, let's feast and drink for tomorrow we die. In other words, let's eat and drink and be merry and, and engage in all kinds of debauchery and, and, and pleasure. For it, it matters not. Because we die and when we die, there's nothing beyond that. There's no hope beyond that. There's no resurrection from the dead. So what difference does it make what we do uh, in this life, we might as well get drunk and get stoned and 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 live a life of of want and pleasure and desire and and sin, because it doesn't matter. It it doesn't matter. And sadly, friends, there are people who believe that even today. There were people in the church in Corinth who believed that, and there are people today who believe that. And it doesn't matter. Get drunk, get stoned, party with wild abandon. Doesn't matter. And the sad reality is, friends, it does matter. It does matter because there is the hope of resurrection. And Jesus gave us that hope when he rose victorious on the third day. And so Paul says, and we need to be reminded of this ourselves, don't be fooled by those who say such things. Don't be fooled. Don't be misled. Don't be led astray by false doctrines and false teachings. Don't be driven by the wind of doctrine that takes you away from following Christ. Because he says, for bad company corrupts good character. Oh, how many times did I hear my parents say that to me? Choose carefully your friends. Choose carefully the people you hang around with. Choose carefully the doctrine that you follow. Because as Jesus said, not all roads lead to eternal life. The wide road, which is easy and filled with pleasure, leads to destruction and death. The narrow path, which is rough, and difficult leads to eternal life. Oh, it's very easy to get drawn into following the ways of the world because they're easy and they're fun and they're, they're pleasant, but they lead to destruction. And if there's no resurrection from the dead, then what difference does it make, Paul is saying? But it does make a difference because there is resurrection from the dead and when we hang out with people who corrupt the doctrine corrupt the gospel corrupt the teachings of Jesus Christ to fit the desires of their own hearts then we get led astray he says think carefully about what is right and stop sinning. How many times do we hear that stop sinning? Sin no more in the Gospels. In, in fact, in, in, in all of Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament. The most profound example of that is Jesus when the, the Pharisees bring the woman who is caught in adultery to him and Jesus challenges them and he says, he who is without sin cast the first stone and they all drop their stones and walk away and he's left with this woman. And he says to her, is there no one to condemn you? And she says, no, no one. And he says, then I don't condemn you either. Go, but sin no more. Stop sinning. 
stop sinning because sin separates us from God. And Jesus' blood paid the price for our sin so that we could have fellowship with him now and for all eternity. But because Jesus' blood pardoned our sin doesn't give us a free pass to just keep sinning. When we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And a life in Christ is a life that has been purified from a life of sin. It doesn't mean that we won't sin, but it means that we seek the Lord's leading and the power of Holy Spirit to help us not live lives of sin. So he says, think carefully about what is right and stop sinning. Think about what is right. Think about Christ. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and, and uh, verses 6, um, 6 to 8, and I'm going to read, I was going to just paraphrase it, but it's better if I read it because it's a powerful, powerful couple of verses. He says, uh, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Think about these things. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, those are the things that, that are in our thoughts. And that's what Paul's getting at here. When we believe in the resurrection, when, we, when our hope and our faith is founded on the truth of the resurrection, and we have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, our thoughts are fixed on him. And we think about these things. And he says one final thing here. He says, For to your shame I say that some of you don't know God at all. And he's acknowledging in the church in Corinth that there are those who say all the right words and do all the right things and and. And they appear on the outside to be godly uh, men of God. But their lives don't demonstrate that Christ abides in them, that they are in Christ. And so we have to, to recognize in our own lives the need to reflect Christ in us. The words we speak, the things we do. And we need to check ourselves. And if, if we are doing something or saying something that is not consistent with God's word or God's will, then we need to stop. And we need Holy Spirit's help each and every day, to guide us in that process as we deepen our relationship with him. Because just because we can quote, quote scripture verses or sing hymns or go to church every Sunday doesn't mean that we know God or that he knows us intimately, personally. And Jesus 
speaks about this too in the gospel when he's when he says when the people come to him and they say lord we've been doing this in your name and we've been doing that in your name and we you know we've been saying lord lord and he and jesus says depart from me i never knew you just because you say lord lord doesn't mean that you have a relationship with jesus So we need to be careful and we need to be wise and we need to constantly seek the Lord in all we do. And when we do, he's faithful and will reveal himself to us in powerful and meaningful ways. So whatever you're facing today, friends, ask the Lord for help and he will do it. He will give it to you. He will lead you in the way you should go. And by doing so, you bring glory to him. Let's pray together. Friends, we thank you for gathering this morning. And God, we thank you for welcoming us in your presence to spend time in your word, to hear your still small voice speaking to us. Jesus, we thank you for preparing the way for us through your shed blood on the cross at Calvary. And Lord, we pray that you would help us this day to be your witnesses, to speak your truth, to walk humbly with you. May your love and your light shine brightly forth from us. That when people look at us, they won't see us, but they will see you in us. And that they will know that, you, that we are your followers, your disciples, by the love that we share with others. Lord, would you be glorified through us. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's word. I hope that you've been encouraged by it. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we uh, enter into the exciting part of Paul's uh, expression of the resurrection, beginning um, with verse 35 of chapter 15. So we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Blessings to you. Go in peace, friends. May the Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow.